we will also be streaming this webinar on Zoom, I mean, on YouTube. So um, if you have any issues with uh, being live or having your, uh, your names up, you are welcome to message me or anybody else uh, on, uh, on the chat, any, anybody from the G5A team or myself. And we are happy to uh, speak with you regarding uh, your consent for that. This session will also be recorded. So again, if you might have any concerns about that, please do reach out to us, message us, and we will, um, we will uh, take care of that issue for you. I'm going to start our session now. I think we've waited. Um, so good evening. My name is Ritika and behalf, on behalf of the G5A Foundation for Contemporary Culture, I'd like to welcome you all to this webinar, Responses to Art Through Fashion and Movement. Uh, at G5A, we believe that art and culture have the power to catalyze change for the better by challenging people to think critically, creatively, and courageously. We work at the intersection of culture, community, and city through a series of diverse programs and our projects across G South Ward in Mumbai and beyond. Our curatorial element, the G5A Forum, is proud to bring to you our first digital launch in collaboration with established form as a part of edition two series on movement. In an ideal world, we would have liked to have you all in our black box, and I would be explaining our house rules to you. But since things have changed and we've had to temporarily shut our red doors, uh, I do have to bring up once again the house rules for this webinar. As you can see on screen, again, please turn off your video, stay on mute, and change your name format to follow your first name and then location. Uh, you are welcome to post any questions or any comments you might have during this webinar on the chat section. We will be reading through them. And for an optimal experience, please make sure that you have speaker view turned on. Despite being forced to temporarily shut our red doors, we have taken this time to bring to you many digital programs online, such as Virtual Cinema Club and One Take Over. However, we've been working extra hard behind the scenes to ensure that we have inspiring and cutting edge programs ready for you when it's safe to meet again. Sessions like this are brought to you for free because of the dedication of the team at G5A, all of my wonderful colleagues, to keep the conversation about arts and culture alive, especially during such isolating times. So do consider supporting our The Arts Are Resilient Today Fund uh, we, it is aimed at supporting our programs and projects uh, for the next 2020 and 21 season. I'd like to thank those of you who have already donated while registering for this webinar, and I urge the rest of you to please consider donating any amount after, after this session is over if you'd like to see more conversations like this. With that, let's jump right into it. Established form in collaboration with G5A Forum brings to you a visual story of movement expressed through painting, fashion, design, and dance. A creative journey that travels the globe during these isolating times, edition two brings in multiple voices across three creative disciplines for a radical and immersive conversation about texture and the movement it inspires. We will be examining the significance of collaborative multidisciplinary practices and the virtues of engaging with materials in isolation as a jumping point to creation. Today, we have a variety of panelists with us representing those disciplines. I'd like to first introduce Una Domello, who is the Artistic Director for Edition 2. She has an educational background from the School of the Art Institute, Chicago. She has taken on roles such as art and gallery director at the Chicago Muse Mosaic School in conjunction with events at the Gallery of Contemporary Mosaics. After making Chicago her home for over a decade, she returned to Mumbai in 2018. She is a represented visual artist, having exhibited all over the uh, globally for a decade across the US, as well as in China, India, Italy, and Singapore. She has created two textile artworks entitled Reds, 
and art existing elsewhere. Her work was the starting point for this edition as the texture and textile art is what appears in garments and dance. We're also joined by the designer of House of Sewn, Soni Patel. She holds a degree in psychology and business, but followed her passion for art and design to Paris, where she worked as a forecast and trend consultant, anticipating change and building innovative strategies for fashion, luxury, and art. She soon found hands-on training at the ateliers of Nanette Lepore, Marquesa by Georgina Chapman, and Duro Olowu in New York City. Sony returned to Mumbai in 2015, where she founded House of Sewn, a contemporary women's label created to tell inspiring stories about women, art, and culture through the medium of fabric. She is the creative director for Edition 2 and has designed the bespoke wearable art pieces that you will be seeing today. We also have with us ballerina Pia Sutaria. She's trained in ballet for 18 years and has performed across the globe with Navdhara, that is India's premier the uh, premier dance theater company and has also performed at opening acts for Miss Universe and other prestigious platforms. Pia has created a movement piece titled Hues with the original artworks read by Bayuna, where she explores the bounds of dance while interacting with art and engaging on a silent and creative scale. We also have with us ballerina Olga Malinovskaya from the Bolshoi Ballet. Olga has danced for the reputed Boston Ballet amongst many others and joins us today from Monte Carlo. Inspired by unusual collaborations, Olga created an improv piece titled Blackbird in response to a wearable art jacket by artist Una de Mello and designer from House of Stone. It is critical to note that this piece was created entirely during lockdown and through virtual communication with the other collaborators. In the spirit of this collaborative effort, we are also joined by other collaborators who have been essential to this work. We have with us uh, Shivan and Sunny Grover, who are the filmmakers. We have composer Sasha Pushkin and Makta, all who have played a critical role in building Edition 2. Shivan and Sunny are a writer-director team who are based between Mumbai and Los Angeles. They're known for their award-winning narrative short films, who have, and they're also focused on telling human stories in hyper-stylized worlds. They've spent the last five years working independently and crafting stories that stand for their feminist LGBTQIA plus beliefs. They're the creators of Hues, the response piece by Pia. And uh, sorry, Sasha is a composer, pianist, improviser, singer, and concept creator. He works in the fields of improvised, contemporary, and new music, world, jazz, electronic, and rock, using elements of industrial, avant-garde, classic, and more. He has an interdisciplinary and cross-cultural approach that involves collaborations in the field of modern dance, multimedia, and literature. Sasha has composed the music for the improv piece titled Blackbird, the response piece created by Olga, to wearable art jacket by artist Una de Mello and the designer for House of Stone. Makta is Satha Karkare's solo project, which explores uh, his love for Hindi and Urdu poetry with diverse genres of music and unconventional ways of making these languages beautiful and palatable for all listeners. Makta has composed music for Hughes, the response piece uh, filmed by Shivan and Sunny featuring Pia, uh, responding to the title to the artwork title read by Una. I request all of our panelists to turn on their video and unmute themselves so that they can say hello to all of our audience members here. Hello everyone. It's lovely to see you all. Hi everyone. Hello, hi. Thank you for the introductions, Ritika. Of course, we're so so pleased to have you here with us today. I think this is also, um, you know, one of the first opportunities we've had to all be together online. I think we've all been individually working, like with each other, but it's really nice to be here. That's wonderful. Thank you for joining us, everyone, from all over the world. I'd like to begin with uh, a question 
as many of you present may or may not know, uh, I represent G5A and I've worked with all of our collaborators here to create the visual language um, for this exhibition. And something that struck me from our very first calls uh, many months ago, uh, before I'd even seen any of the final videos and any of the final photographs of the pieces, was the idea of incorporating movement as a theme. Uh, could you guys tell us a little bit about how and why that came to be and why there was such an important need for collaboration for this edition? Hi, Vritika. Thanks for that introduction. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, so first of all, yeah, it's great to be here with G5A and also all of the collaborators together for the first time, like uh, Pia mentioned. And um, I would say the starting point was for movement was really the material and the fabric that came together with this edition. And um, ultimately it was then about different ways to interpret the movement and uh, have it go across different artistic disciplines and see how that would shift, how that would add on to each other and um, the different language that it would kind of take on. Um, so that's kind of where the movement and then uh, Una and I, I know, I know Una, um, we spoke a lot about this for edition one when we were kind of exploring just the wearable art part of it, which was just art and fashion back then. And um, the idea that the same thing can do different things when different people and different art forms are handling it. And, um, you know, with the goal not to change it and not to undo it, but ultimately to build on it and um, give it a different form. Right. I think, uh, you know, to your point as well, Ritika, around collaboration. Um, collaboration is, uh, it, it's critical to, I think, any artistic process, artistic processes, um, visual art in, in particular, why I was drawn to collaboration or why Sony and I decided um, that established form needs to be a creative collective and needs to be something greater was from the success that we saw from Edition One in the fact that we can create something um, unusual and um, sometimes a little difficult to digest or difficult to understand, but unusual nonetheless. And, um, and it's, it's enriching. So to build on what Sony said, creating together is an enriching process. And uh, it only really further um, adds value to what we can do independently. That's wonderful. Uh, I do have some of the, the process images here. Uh, Pia and uh, Sasha and uh, all of our other collaborators. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Um, about how were you able to collaborate like this uh, and the need for that collaboration? Um, I personally really, really, um, I was thrilled when Una called me. She was my first point of contact, I think, with regard to this process. And um, I think it was primarily because um, it was an opportunity to uh, start something from scratch um, and take it anywhere I wanted to. I think that was the most um, exciting bit uh, in the beginning. And um, I think process-wise, um, even though it was exciting, uh, it also left me uh, with a lot of thinking and a lot of challenges because, um, you know, so often we're hired to do work or uh, there's a specific kind of outcome and there's a client. And in, in this process, I think it was um, really wonderful uh, to leave things open-ended and to trust. I think that the important thing was the fact that everyone who reached out to everyone, there was an element of trust uh, because I think uh, with me, um, I feel very lucky to have worked with Shivan, Sunny and Sarthak specifically because we've actually seen each other grow up. Um, so I think that was like an innate, uh, really wonderful. I don't know how often people actually get to do that. And because we could choose the people we wanted to work with, uh, add as many layers as we wanted. And um, we really trusted who we were working with. Um, I think it was a completely different experience to um, what I'm used to, at least in India, wherein, um, you know, you're doing something for a commercial show or you're doing something uh, for an advertisement or you're doing something for a director, you know? So I think that was, I, for me, something that stood out uh, is that element of trust and, and comfort. And it still ended up being something really like creatively satisfying. 
I think something that's really cool about this entire process is the fact that, you know, when you think about it, there are two kinds of like collaborative processes where you're either told that this is my vision by somebody you said, all right, this is my vision. And, you know, whatever you're doing now, whether you're creating music or film or whatever, it's in service of what I've told you to do. And of course you get the credit for it and so on and so forth. But then the other kind of process is where, you know, they say this is absolutely open-ended and what is it that you can bring to the table? You know, so you're contributing as much to this as uh, somebody else's, you know, so it's, you're all sort of um, at equal footing. And I think that was really interesting about this process because I first spoke to Pia who briefed me about this and then I got in touch with Shivan and then I didn't speak to Pia at all. And I was only in touch with Shivan and it just kept going in that sort of amazing way. And it just turned out to be what it is now entirely because of um, the way it was handled. It was not like some sort of uh, top down orders coming down and saying, this is what you have to do, which is a really interesting thing. That's true. Even when uh, Una and Somi did approach G5A for this collaboration, there was a level of trust that was sort of inbuilt into that process. And although when we created the, the creatives and the visuals and the narratives for this collaboration, it very much felt that we were a part of it rather than them coming to us. And that's what we really treasured about this kind of work, um, that we were able to work so closely originally with uh, Una and Sony, and then we were introduced to everyone else, especially even during the setups of these webinars to speak to everyone finally and, and see everyone's excitement for this creation that sort of come together. Um, I think that was a very special sort of uh, work that happened. Um, and I think that's to a lot of the, the context that we're creating this work in as well. And, um, you know, the fact that we did have to create separately and Ultimately, it was all going to be brought together, but um, it was truly just different pieces coming together to make something. something in the Correct. End. Because That's I true. think the point as well, it wasn't a, a top-down idea. Uh, it, was, it was a vision. Uh, Sony and I definitely had an idea of what we thought this would look like. But the end result, the end product, the, the, the finery really with which every collaborator has brought their work into this um, has been um, because they're, you know, they're, they're fabulous at what they do and, that, and they're willing to bring it in and hold the original idea true and yet bring their own voice in. I think that's, um, it, it's, it's about, you know, to Pia said it's about trust and I would build on that and say it's about trust and about respect because without that element for the for someone else's work, someone else's craft, uh, it, um, it can still remain an isolated experience. It can still be, um, you know, me talking to, to Shivan and saying, I have this idea and I need exactly this. It wasn't that, it was, okay, so Shivan, you're really great at what you do and let's, why don't you creatively direct what this, what this will look like? Um, I just... I have this vision in mind and let's find a way to sort of mesh that in with, with your work. So that was, um, it's come together really succinctly. That's very true. And um, just for the context of everyone who has joined us, I'm going to be playing uh, two of the videos that is both the movement pieces that we have. Um, give me a moment to bring it on screen.
was lovely. Now we have Pia's piece. Art is, like I said, art is it's precious. It's a very, uh, it's a private, intimate experience even to create it. To bring dance in is to allow a different language to speak through. energy of what someone is doing because how we make creates the energy of what we make. And that perhaps will start to sort of, you know, spark something else. You have something that was never in your environment that now exists there. And from that state of, of being a little disconcerted, something authentic can really emerge. Carl Jung said that what you resist persists. Even though there is, it's not always easy to have a creation that is as alive as you are because it also has a mind of its own and people give and take differently and not always how you want it to. But what it does certainly do is it makes me aware repeatedly that I am made to create and so I persist. Those videos were absolutely lovely. It always takes me a minute to those videos were absolutely lovely and it always takes me a minute to sort of absorb them and really sit with them for a moment and it occurred to me that it's so it's so difficult to uh, integrate such varying practices in this way i wonder how how you were able to do that um it's visible for example that what una created uh, acts as a primary material for sony which then acts as a primary material for Olga, um, how how were you able to sort of uh, bring that across all these media and into movements? And what was that common thread between your practices when you created this? Anyone is welcome to answer. Ritika, I wanted to tell you, Olga's uh, uh, camera is not working. She is with us, uh, but she just dropped me a message that her camera isn't working. So, right. But any, any of you are still welcome to answer that question. I think we can start with uh, with the aspect of you know, as you touched on, uh, that I. For me as well, there's a process in this. When the, the fabric comes to me, it looks a certain way. And then I, I create through my technique a way to sort of, um, I call them skins, but essentially what I do is to sort of freeze them in, in uh, textures and in forms. And then off to House of Sewn, they have gone in the past. And that's where, where um, they are sort of reimagined and recreated into something else. Um, and so even I guess to kind of uh, take it back to the this idea of movement, um, when Una, before Una actually creates her art, it's fabric, which is, you know, flowing, malleable, um, then she kind of freezes that and it becomes static movement, which then um, at House of Sewn, we invite that as the piece of art that it is and that it's now become. And we interpret that movement differently. We stitch it together with fabric, which will ultimately sit on a body. And then dance, when you bring dance into it and um, having that actually move on a body, uh, it speaks a different language and it brings uh, life, you know, in a way that just creating a piece of clothing couldn't. 
And so once again, it moves differently. And, um, and then the way that story is told through the dance with um, the filmmaking, with the sound, with the music and all of those parts play such a crucial uh, role in kind of continuing that story and um, just taking it forward, that story of movement. That's lovely. Uh, yeah, would you would you want to comment on that and on how you were able to respond and bring texture and movement, for example, with your work, um, and also Shivnam and to to film all of that um, in this totally different way. Um, yeah, I think um, that was actually again it was something that was uh, I put myself through a new process. I think creatively. Uh, and I was uh, quite intrigued to see what the end result would be like, uh, because of what I don't usually do is improvise. And uh, this time with Una's work, that's what I decided to do. Um, so I think it was the piece we chose. Actually, I was, the first thing that was confusing was uh, choosing between two pieces that she gave me. Uh, one was very much, I would say, uh, very aligned with um, my personality and the one that actually we eventually ended up choosing that was Reds uh, wasn't um, so I was very intrigued to see um, what it would feel like when I was when I put myself in the environment and uh, I think Shivan and Sunny also really really helped um, in kind of guiding um, not really guiding I would say I would uh, they were probably more um, they were open to any response I had uh, but they, um, I would say, added their own lens or their own layer to the, the entire process for me as we went along. Shivan also used to be a dancer, so that was really helpful. Um, so I would say that process-wise, it was just interesting to improvise and see kind of the response. So especially on the beach with the wind, having the artwork kind of not just me manipulated, but just also have like nature and like that movement not necessarily come through me, but just through... Uh, the environment that surrounded me that added a really interesting uh, layer and um, I think looking at all the footage after made me realize that it was extremely powerful to kind of allow rather than try and force or create a piece um, so I guess that was what what the process was like for me it was very impulsive um, it wasn't planned and um, Shivan did a really Shivan and Sunny did a really really good job in in um, I think uh, seeing what I was trying to put across and interpreting it themselves through their own lens and, and making it film. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. For uh, if initially when um, Una approached Pia and then Pia approached us, um, the idea was to kind of like get a, uh, capture the emotional response that Pia had towards the piece. Um, so that was like our starting point. We're like, okay, if she's going to, if she's going to have an emotional way of responding to something how can we as filmmakers capture that and present it in the most like honest true way um, without oh, sorry someone has said it <laughs> so yeah it was um just about trying to keep it as simple um in what she was trying to say and how we can convey that to you um and it kind of just stick together or we brought it together and Sasha and Sarthak as well as composers and creating the music for this. Um, how did you respond to that? The movement and texture. Sorry, Sasha, you will have to unmute yourself. Uh, you're talking to Sasha or to Olga? <laughs> to both of you, Olga, lovely to hear you. Yeah. <laughs> lovely to hear you. I'm sorry, guys, because uh, with uh, my uh, just my camera doesn't work. Uh, Sasha is not here, so it's uh, it's me. No, I'm here. Hi. I'm here. Hi. Olga, I'm Hello. here now. Hi. <laughs> Привет, Оля. Я здесь. Привет. Mm -hmm. Do do tell us. Do please share how how texture and movement was was a response for you guys. Olga. Go. Ah, me. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, well, first of all, it's all art. It's um, so. Uh, what about me? I really fall in love with the piece. 
and it really goes um, um, by my instinct, you know, because it mm, doesn't happen to me very often when I love uh, things, when I love art, when I love music. It's very rarely to me to fall in love. So, and um, when I saw it, um, oh, the first, uh, uh, the first image, what I've got, it was a blackbird, of course. And uh, so it's inspired me and with music of Sasha and uh, his music always inspires me. And um, uh, I decided to create this small piece, but it was of course during the lockdown as, uh, and uh, as we couldn't plan anything, we decided that I will do it uh, by using my camera, my phone camera. And my operator was the chair. <laughs> But, um, well, uh, I, uh, at, at last I, uh, we decided that it's a very nice piece and um, I was actually very happy and uh, I enjoyed the process a lot because um, I don't know, to, to even to montage, even to, um, you know, to, to, to dance, to imp uh, improvise, it was uh, uh, very, very interesting to me because usually I don't, I never improvise because I'm a classical ba ballerina and, um, Oh, we don't improvise. <laughs> and it was my first experience and I really enjoyed it. So I understand that I can do it. And, um, and also what, um, what I've got is the lyrics from the song of, of uh, the Beatles, the Blackbird. Um, what inspired me a lot also. So it's like, um, I will read it. Blackbird singing in the dead of night, take these broken wings and learn to fly all your life. Uh, you were only waiting for this moment to arise. So I think it's a lovely, it fits a lot, uh, this small creation. So, voila. <laughs> I'm really happy to, to be able to, to create together, to work together. And I hope uh, it's not the last time and uh, we'll do anything, uh, we'll do something even better with you guys. <laughs> Somewhere else awesome. in the world. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. in person as well. <laughs> I deal with this as well with Olga. When Olga, I think we, you, Sony, and I spoke maybe, maybe six, seven months ago, or something like a long time ago. And the original idea was to actually uh, exhibit this work live uh, in a gallery setting with Olga performing live uh, somewhere in France. That was the. That's where we had started, and then of course uh, the you know situations changed and um, and I actually want to do a personal shout out to Sasha because Sasha I've never seen you in person before it's so lovely to to finally see you and we'd love to hear from you as well thank you I'm also happy to be here and uh, to be connected with you it's a, a special situation for me um, I love to do different collaborations with very, very different people, uh, also very different fields, uh, and uh, also with dance. And uh, Olga, of course, gives me a lot of inspiration. We know each other for some time, and we did already something. And Olga also danced uh, um, to my music in uh, main uh, opera uh, house in of Estonia, a Baltic country, and uh, uh, we always talk about some collaborations to do something together. So it was a good chance to uh, to get together, and I knew that it would be a big challenge for her um, because, as she said, she is not an improviser. Um, and but she's really on the high high level of uh, classical ballet, and um, mm, I was happy that she chose uh, this music. Uh, she chose it uh, by herself, and uh, she had some choice of my music. She chose this, and I was uh, happy to see how intense she works on it, and so how she works on video. And then we phoned and um, between Berlin and uh, Côte d'Azur, France, because uh, I'm in Berlin. And uh, mm, we talked a lot uh, about uh, the result, how I was seeing this, how she was seeing this, and um, I'm very happy to see what comes. And it's also very interesting 
I have to say that it's quite interesting for me to be connected with you right now, not only talk, but to feel that behind each of you is uh, some creative work and how it comes together. So it's nice to be here. That's wonderful. It really seems that there is, um, even though some of you haven't been able to meet or speak in person before, that there is a common thread that we all are drawn to with each other's work. Like Sasha, you were saying that you were drawn to Olga, inspired by her, and she is similarly inspired by you. Um, so when the lockdown happened, that might have been a really huge challenge to overcome. How were you guys able to, to overcome that and still have such a wonderful, diverse output? Uh, what, did you all, what did you have to do to sort of make sure that everything happened on time, even with us? Uh, I know that we were sending lots of emails and things, but between the for part of creation, um, do you want to share some of those challenges? Um, I think we have DHL to thank for getting her the jacket before everything, <laughs> everything sort of uh, hit the roof. Um, Olga had uh, the initial idea actually was to get her this jacket to start the initial emotional experience around the texture. Um, and as Olga described, it spoke to her and um, it comes down to, I think, Sony and I, we would have, of course, there's a lot of things we would have loved to do a little more intimately, uh, the creative process and actually being able to watch Olga work and Pia work and, and watch Shivan work and Sasha and, and Sarthak and so on. But I would, I would say that it really comes down to... Um, to having a keen interest in someone's work. If you're interested in their work and you can relate to that, uh, then you've, I mean, you're in, right? It's usually about that. You're, it's about um, appreciation for someone's craft and, uh, and of course, everything else that everyone's talked about. But I think that was, it started strong with, with Sony and Olga and I at the very start with the wearable jacket and, for how, and how she felt with the piece itself. And so when when Olga began her planning and brought Sasha in, it just was it was um, it was smooth. And Sasha, Shivan, Sunny, uh, you, you know, sort of I, in. I have to say that like for me the process was um, it was actually pretty challenging, but in a really fun way because um, for me all I had to go on in the beginning because I'd spoken to Pia, and then all I had to go on were. Uh, the pictures that Shivan sent me of Reds of Una's art, and I'd never seen anything like it. So I just kept, you know, analyzing it for a long while, and it was really, really immersive and evocative. And I said to myself that if I have to, because my my Hindi project is very, very nascent, and this was obviously without devoid of any language. And so for me, when I try to like write a whole lot of instrumental music, which I really love to do, and I love to score film stuff and all of that, you know, you know how all of our personalities are sort of an amalgamation of our experiences and, and memories, right? So I try to look for sounds that can evoke that, you know, so it's like strings or keys or whatever it is that we put together so that each song has its own sort of personality, you know? Um, and so I started doing that and I was in constant touch with Shivan and I, the key word for me was just experimental and go figure, you know, have a great time doing it. So um, it was really cool in that sense because there was a constant back and forth. And for me, the movement was all imaginative because I'd seen Pia perform. I could see what this artwork was doing for me in the sense of, like I said, how immersive it was, but I could also imagine the movement. And I kept doing that. I kept, I, I knew where they were going to film. So I had like a visual in, in, in my head and it pretty much turned out to be a whole lot like that. And so that's what pieced it together for me, you know? And I have to actually thank everybody here for, yanking me and maybe each of us out of crushing solitude in these times. <laughs> but if uh, I think the big takeaway for me also lastly is that this is a fantastic time to experiment and collaborate and take risks more than anything else. Um, so if this is like I said, something I've never done and I was ready to jump into it. And if there is one takeaway for anybody else who's also interested in music or artistically inclined, I'd say this is a fantastic time to reach out to people and break the barriers of time, distance, all of that can can virtually be done. Uh, it's just about actually going ahead and doing it. And this is the best time to do that. Did anyone else have any major challenges with, with lockdown? And I know it's also been an isolating time. So even within like a mental space of being able to create can be really difficult to push through. 
um did anyone I, else feel that i honestly feel like um in fact for for me as an artist this has been a time of like uh, a lot of like things kind of building up and me really wanting to express and i think i'm most grateful um that this has been a, like a the closest to a performing opportunity i've had since it began because i think that's something i've really missed you know and i'm i'm i don't know when the next time i'm going to get into a theater is but this felt very close to that or almost it was different but it was just an incredible opportunity to actually just dance um and i think that was not so much of a challenge but just such a rewarding um experience that i don't think i would have maybe had otherwise if if una and everyone else hadn't thought of it so that was really great i think I think it's exciting. I think, yeah. No, no, Shivan, you go. <laughs> um, it was exciting because it, it uh, strips you down of what you're used to. Like, you don't have rehearsal space. You don't have a choreographer. You don't have um, a stylist to come and make sure you're looking good all the time. You don't have a makeup artist. Like the things that kind of build in on a film shoot or uh, like a 200 member crew running your project. It was just us, a camera, a performer, and. the emotional response and to kind of come back and then sit with sadha can be like okay this is what i have um this is kind of what she's feeling and that's the kind of the feeling i want us to kind of get through to the person watching it and that's that's it i can't tell you any more than that because i don't want to inhibit your expression of this and because i wasn't told any more than that so my um our response was completely um honest and true and it wasn't um you know mixed down with anything it wasn't a it wasn't a brief that we were following and kind of ticking as we went around um, so then we kind of took what we got and took it on forward to sarthak and we like hi this is this is what we have can you make this as um can you find the emotional thread in this cuz as a filmmaker that's important right it's it's important to find what you're trying to say and that's what una wanted to kind of put through with her art and then what pia wanted to say with her performance and what we wanted to say with our film and then what sathik wanted to say with his music so kind of all like tunneling all of that into this film is a logistical nightmare if it wasn't the lockdown but the lockdown kind of just you know took everything away and like you have to make it work just do what you need to do and get it done and that's kind of what everyone did i think the the challenge is also like you know it's a lockdown you can't be like with a lot of people you you want to shoot it in a safe space so you start looking for locations and then you realize you don't want to shoot it in a house and like okay what's the safest open place i can think to shoot it and she was like let's go to the beach i'm like are you sure and then we went to like a very very secluded part of the beach it was just like the four of us and um, like more challenging but it was uh, liberating in a way because you you kind of have blinders as as artists because you have like this place that you want to go you put these rules up for yourself you're like i want i'm going to do this for the rest of like 5 years and then i'm going to learn to overcome those challenges but then suddenly like the blinders are off and um you're like okay i have an iphone i have a dancer i have this piece of art and let's see what we can create from that and then we came back with like an hours worth of footage and it like got cut down to 2 minutes and we're like okay <laughs> and then we shot uh, una's testimonials and then try to weave what she was saying with uh, the images that we were trying to put across and then of course mark the um, sata came and just like you know did something really strange with it where it started feeling a lot more emotional a lot more i don't know trans uh, uh, it it traveled to a different space i would say mm-hmm. and yeah it it was um, very fun it was a very very <laughs> liberating I prefer strange. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think mean, I also can... speaking, to, Sorry. speaking to what um Shivan was saying about boxes and like not having boxes to tick. Um people do kind of want to put things in sections and boxes of this is music and this is art and this is and um though we've created in our individual spaces across the world and to some extent an isolation for such a collaborative piece of work uh, and though we do need to focus on that process we also need to focus on the whole and so um kind of like uh you know like watching a film or eating a meal we know the different ingredients and that are going into it but ultimately when we're consuming it or when we're engaging with it in the end it's just what you feel about that end product and what you kind of feel about it once it's come together and so um i remember for me watching um watching olga dance and 
uh, hearing Sasha's music, that was my first kind of, uh, that was the first piece of it that I heard and saw even before my own, before our wearable art was created. And so that like, so even just seeing that was kind of like a, a striking moment for me because it was all of a sudden the, the possibilities for what it could become were kind of, and what, what it would be in, at the end as one whole kind of uh, emerged from there. And so I think that could be a challenge as well, trying to not put it into so many boxes and uh, maybe this time gave us that opportunity. Yeah. I see that emotion is a very much a common thread between all of, all of the collaborators here. Um, but uh, Una and Sony, for example, since, since you guys had started with the, the jacket, how do you feel now seeing everyone's responses being so different? I mean, um, Blackbird is very different from Hughes. It's been treated very differently. Uh, how do you feel about the intent sort of moving with different people through various art forms? You know, it's there. There's two things coming up for me. I think um, I, I will say I'm I'm feeling um, just really delighted hearing everyone saying things that Sony and I were hoping that everyone was feeling as they were creating this. Um, and I, I would say two things. When when I'm asked about my work and why I create, uh, why I do what I do to the fabric and why I I create the texture, um, it's because I enjoy. Um, what you reveal and what you conceal. Like I enjoy that that dichotomy and that conversation. And the dance and the way uh, Pia, Olga and all its attributing elements have, um, have only built on how I have always seen my work. It's, and, and that's sort of, I think that's the sort of symbiotic magic of, of, of watching something unravel the way it does. And, um, because you know, Sony and I play two hats here, right? We we uh, we run established form, and we were also the the collaborators in this. And collaboration can very often be seen as a mandate. It's it's cool, you know. Everyone's everyone wants to do it, and um, and also everyone's very fixed on an end product. So as we went into this, how do we really shift from collaboration as a mandate to collaboration as sharing and collaboration as enrichment. Uh, it's very natural for creatives to feel uh, protective of their work and feel protective of how they talk about their work, how it's shared. Um, I myself have knowing that experience and very sensitive to everybody else who's who's in the mix, but I, I think that's, that's what's coming up for me a lot. And I think everyone's talking about collaboration and we can only, I think that this is just sort of scratching the surface. I think we can go much deeper and if I had time and if, if we could actually all sit in a room together with everyone who's on the screen, all our collaborators and really talk about what this could look like, I think it would be sort of, you know, multifold more beautiful. Um, and yet it's so different because everyone's voices are different and that's how it should be. There's no one way to say something, uh, to, sh to say what you want to say. So I think it should, it should be held in that, that sort of lovely space. Precisely, which is why when we were called in uh, towards much later towards the end, uh, and our contribution to this was obviously creating this whole narrative and bringing everyone finally together today as well. Um, and we we saw it as exactly what you say is like the whole is greater than the sum of each part, uh, and we see you all having created, a, although there were many moving parts to have created a whole sort of narrative and experience of not just fashion, not just some visual art, but also movement and bringing it all together in a way that we would never have expected, especially at a time like this. Um, like Pia was saying, it's definitely uh, a chance to sort of put on a performative piece in a situation when you never thought you could have. Um, and I find that really interesting um, because um, Sasha, for example, is and Sarthak are both coming from a musical spaces. Uh, I know that when it comes to visual and when it comes to design, collaboration is something that is very much instilled. But how do you feel uh, about such collaborative work adding to your industries and adding to your fields? Do you think that this is something that um, people should be taking on and such projects are uh, viable and special? Mm, I, I think that um, um, people actually 
like in normal life people uh, communicate so uh, i i have no idea to compare it with like normal conversation we're right? talking now so if i go down the street maybe i meet someone and i start to speak and uh, it's always uh, very personal it depends on my mood, on the mood of a person, it depends on his background, on my lifestyle, on so many things. Uh, so, but not each conversation works well. So it depends who you meet, when you meet, uh, what are the circumstances. Uh, so I think uh, it's quite important uh, to, um, to feel this frequency, to get together. Uh, with this frequency and to go together then to have one result um, because otherwise it can end with only uh, talking 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 so it's something about um, not only talk and being creative itself but also to go somewhere together to have like a goal this this goal could change but uh, but still like to have a common view so uh, like we go there okay we understand each other we try to understand each other so that's what i feel right now i want to say yeah uh, olga would you like to, to add to that Oh, well, I totally agree with uh, Sasha, and uh, usually it's a chemistry uh, between between people, between artists. So if it works, it works. If not, no. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> now, well, I, yeah, I now, didn't mean it's so easy, but well, if you say easy, let's do it easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, like it's a chemistry. You, you can nothing to do, you know. That's right. Yeah. And um, even within music and film and dance, how do you find such collaborations working in the future? Uh, so oh, I think like uh, in between all of us using all these arts, we can, we can create a performance, a show, a movie, whatever. And I think it will be really interesting and unusual because at this moment, uh, all the Yes, all the um, all the um, art, what I, what I see, it's uh, for for me. It's very unusual. The music, the the Una's pieces, the uh, Sony uh, passion is is it's really something what I I've never seen. So I really feel uh, something good about it for 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 the future. <laughs> and as I usually really uh, follow my instincts, and now. I have a very good feeling. <laughs> so it's, it's safe to say that everyone did not realize maybe at first that there was a joint creative vision and was, all of the parts have come together very instinctively and emotionally for everyone, which is a, a fabulous thread to see. Um, as much as I would like to continue uh, talking with you about this, uh, I think we do have some questions from the audience. So I'd like everyone who is with us, if you could please uh, turn on your video uh, so that our panelists may see you, may hear from you. Um, we will be uh, reading out some of the questions. So uh, when I do call your name, you're welcome to read out the question yourself. But if everyone could please uh, turn on their videos, it would be lovely to see everyone here together uh, to have this discussion. Hello, hi, thank you for joining us. Do turn on your video to be a part of this chat. Hello everyone, nice to meet you all. I think we have uh, one of the first questions uh, from Preeti. 
uh, Preeti, if you'd like to uh, unmute yourself uh, and ask our panelists your question. Sure, thank you so much. Really fascinating how this has come together. And, uh, uh, you know, I think my question has been somewhat answered, but considering I wrote it, I'll ask all the same. Is uh, what did you all learn about yourself through the process of collaborating in response to uh, Una's work? Well, for me, uh, can I answer? Yes, for me, it's, uh, it's um, uh, of course, that I understood that I can improvise. Of course, I cut the I cut small pieces from the the, the <laughs> film what I filmed for myself, but um, uh, but it was a really a challenge for me because as I told, I never improvise, so I think I will try to improve it for the future. And um, what else? Yes, so I understood that I want to go <laughs> to study the filmmaking <laughs> in the future. <laughs> uh, voilà. Wow, that's new for me. I didn't expect this from you. Great. <laughs> yes, I really love. I can. I. I could stay. You know, the whole day long. I. Uh, I can. You know. I don't eat. I don't drink. I do nothing. I don't sleep. So I just. You know, put the film together. <laughs> so I think it's a good sign. Um, I think it's really interesting that um, as as the two dancers, at least on the project, both of us had a similar kind of. Um, uh, inclination toward improvising because it's not something I do either. So something about Olga's work evidently, I think, um, led us to making the same decision. I grew up doing a lot of ballet too, so not inclined to uh, really trust and, and dance without any kind of set choreography. And I think that was the biggest learning for me. I think it was this element of um, going with uh, no set movements plan and surprising myself uh, just by responding to what I was seeing visually and feeling on my body, which was her artwork. And uh, I was so scared because I didn't see any of the footage after. It's not like the usual shoot where you can go and check how you're looking. And um, I was terrified. I was like, this could potentially be terrible or it could be wonderful. And I had no idea until I saw the final piece. So it was just really good learning to, um, I think, trust yourself and know yourself more as, a, as an artist. Exactly. I have to, okay. I have to admit uh, that uh, I've done a lot of uh, uh, projects with improvisation and also with dancers and improvised music. This is my field. So feel free anytime to ask me about this. I'm, I'm here <laughs> to tell anything I know. Lovely. We have our next question from Mika. Uh, Mika, would you like to come off mute and ask your question? Which one now? I have like three. Okay. Uh, so this is a question for Pia and Olga. Uh, why did you choose to improvise when both of you say that you don't usually? What inspired that decision? And did the constraints of the lockdown or quarantine have a role to play in choosing to improvise? Uh, y yes, uh, may I start, Pia? So, um, of course, it's, uh, it was uh, only because of the lockdown, because um, at the beginning, uh, I planned uh, to, to um, ask the choreographers to create a piece for me, and uh, I should go and to perform live. And yes, it's only because of uh, the lockdown, but uh, we learned a lot. <laughs> Funnily enough, same experience, we, uh, I approached someone called Herman, who is an Israeli choreographer I've worked with, uh, and he decided to fly back to Israel. Uh, I think uh, um, Una and I were very um, hopeful. We thought the lockdown would end in May. When she contacted me, I think it was, what, April <laughs> or before that. And we were like, yes, by May, we'll, be, we'll get everything done. And uh, we were just completely thrown off. Um, and just the situation forced me to just say, OK, I'm going to have to just do this myself. Uh, and I personally do not like um, setting choreography on myself. So I made the decision to improvise. And I think it was the complex nature of the piece. The piece, like I kept looking at it. It was in my room for a very long time. And I knew I could feel something, but I couldn't quite decide. And that's very unusual for me. I'm someone who just like makes decisions. 
Um, so I think that also led to me saying, let me just see. Um, we have a question from Shalaka. Hi, Shalaka, do you want to get off mute and ask your question? Hey, hi, you guys. This has been amazing. Uh, so uh, my question is actually to uh, Una and Sony that, um, you know, as, as being a creator, um, how was it, uh, you know, to hand over this, this creation of yours? Like, I mean, it was kind of your baby in the first place. And how was it to just uh, hand it over to the other collaborators? And uh, was it... Um, did this happen at some point that you wanted to control like the final outcome or you had like inputs? So how did that go to? Um, I mean, no, not at all for me. I feel like it was, uh, I, even when I received the Una's art, it was already um, that I couldn't control how I was going to receive it. And then when it went on to do whatever it was going to do, I didn't control, I didn't, I couldn't control it. And so there was, I think there was never any aspect of it um, that made me want to think this is how I want it to turn out. But I think um, having such uh, collaborators, having such uh, talented, you know, respected people doing part of this process, I think uh, makes that easy for sure. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, I think my experience was a little bit different. Um, because I, it's natural to want to make, um, make your work easy to work with, right? So when I'm sending it to Sony, I, uh, even, I've spent seven years developing the, and trying to perfect this technique, but then when Sony starts to cut into it, it raises, like, my nervous system is, you know, is, is rattled because she's, she's cutting and slicing through, uh, not because she's slicing through it, but just to make sure that, what is meant to, um, or what we are used to seeing on a wall and remains at a distance from us can endure being put through a machine and being worn by a person and moved and moved in. And then with the element of dance, specifically the piece that Pia was working with, there was a, uh, always a little fear or concern around construction of the work um, because my, uh, my manager wasn't able to make it here, but I know there would be expectations for me to have had installation notes and aftercare notes and care notes, which I didn't share any of which with Pia at all. Um, because I, the idea is not to handle something with, 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 with fear. And I have, you know, I've experienced my entire career. And, and as I studied, we go through a system of systematic critiquing of our work and which is not always a gentle process in, in visual art. It's uh, it can be, it can be a rough process sometimes. And what it is, what I realized where it sort of fed into what I was able to do this time was it's okay if, if something is going to endure wear and tear and you want to be really careful, but it really has to, you have to sort of, sort of come to a space of knowing that if you need to create something else from what you have already created, then you have to allow it to just be. Um, I mean, I, I, and I know, and I, it, this also goes with, you know, me knowing that um, Olga or Pia took a tremendous care of what they had with them. Uh, but I won't deny that it's, um, it, it develops uh, from building a thicker skin around work and knowing that it's okay to fold and roll. I mean, even the way Sony gets it, sometimes she gets it in a paper bag. Um, so it's, it, you know, we've, we've come a long way from, from how we were. And I have personally, I think my, the element of growth that's come from me is also knowing that it's not done yet. So that, so my piece, when it, when it goes to a PR or an Olga or a Sony, it's not done. It's going to be further built and created on. So we'll see, we'll, we'll work it out. There's a lot of conservative techniques that are available to take care of work. Um, but yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a final question, actually. Um, this is for Sarkar and Sasha. Um, as musicians and as composers for this piece, uh, Sarkar, you mentioned that you were allowed the freedom to sort of think outside of the box and you were not so constrained. But Una said that sometimes critiquing oneself 
uh, is also a difficult process. So how do you how do you navigate that, especially when uh, articulating emotion? Because this is very much an emotional driven response. Yeah, the answer is actually really simple. You know, I think it's just about learning to listen, because if you're caught up in your own head and you're trying to create music, which is what often happens, right? Like the immediate response to using your imaginative powers to be able to do anything is to make sure it's self-serving. So you're sort of like, okay, I'm creating this. Do I like it? Um, and then, of course, you use your critical faculty and you say, no, I've done something better. This can be better. You push it. But when you're working with other people, you just have to learn to listen. You can't be in your own head. You know, you have to understand that. You have to learn to obviously firstly respect people that you're working with. And that from the get-go was exactly where we started off. Um, but then the minute you open yourself up to listening to what other people are saying and showing you and the vision that they share and where this can move, where this, you know, the project can, the direction it can move in, things become a lot easier, you know. And as a musician, I'd say before I create, it is my job to listen, you know. So I think that's that's a really great starting point in a, in any collaborative process and engaging with your work critically is to make sure that you're open to criticism, you're open to listening, and that makes everything so much easier. Okay, uh, I'm, I really agree with many points, and um, for me, it's actually never was a um, problem to be emotional because I'm an emotional person, and. Mm, I would say, um, like you say also, it's about opening, being open to the world. So, and to switch off the critical part of your brain at first and to invite everything to yourself and to see how it works with your emotion. And then later you can give a form to it. But first it's like, for me, it's a little bit like being a child to feel like a child who doesn't criticize him himself and doesn't tell him too much and uh, uh, in his head so it's about like here I am here's the world hello world here I am I do what you give me and I react uh, to this so it's like about uh, about being natural I think but later then you give form to it because I think the word composer is also to uh, to compose something yeah to build something so open and then build it yeah that's that's lovely um i would love to continue asking many many questions um we have one last question uh from simi uh do you want to uh turn off mute there we go well, it's um it's actually uh, first of all i want to say amazing the dancing the music so inspiring i'm not an artist i'm not talented in any of these fields but just so lovely to look at um, my comment was just, I noticed that when I was in December, in Bombay in December, I had, uh, attended the Est Farm show and it was very, very beautiful. Pieces were lovely, but the pieces I saw today are a notch up. So I wanted to just mention that they really are. I mean, the, the designing, I mean, the skins are as gorgeous. The designing is also really, um, I think, even better. So I just want, that's really a comment. And I don't know if the design, you know, the artists want to comment on that. Thank you, Simi. That um, I'm just so happy that you said that because we did even while we were working and we were kind of um, uh, evolving with from edition one to edition two. Uh, that the comfort level with the skins, first of all, helped with that. And um, you know, the first time around, it was very much uh, whatever I got. I kind of made that stitch that in in that kind of form and left it as that. Whereas this time around, I integrated it with fabrics. I integrated it with, um, in its own kind of capacity where fashion and art could really actually integrate and meet uh, midway. And so um, that means a lot, thank you. Well, that was a lovely discussion. I feel everyone would love to, to uh, connect again and speak more, but unfortunately we have run out of time. So thank you everyone, especially our panelists from, for joining us for this evening session. I know that everyone is scattered all over the world. Thank you so much for being here. Um, the G5A website will continue uh, to host the online exhibition. Uh, you can visit uh, our website and you will see a link that leads you directly inside. Uh, it will go on for the next three weeks. 
also do take uh, a moment to to spend some time now after this discussion uh, by visiting g5a.org. Um, you can be sure to find uh, more programs like this uh, uh, on our website. Uh, we also have virtual cinema club and lots of different things happening on Instagram. Uh, so do visit the calendar section as well. G5A Forum is our curatorial element for the G5A Foundation for Contemporary Culture. Uh, we curate, co-create, produce multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary work that is bold, experimental, and just. We hope to bring practitioners to explore and create. We strongly support and encourage original artists um, and practices that are grounded in form, theory, and practice, just as you have seen tonight. Through exhibition series, uh, we hope to bring together artists and practitioners whose work diverges from the mainstream um, and is considered uh, core uh, about their, uh, their, their work. Um, if you have any thoughts or any other things that you would like to share or work that you would like to share with us, please do so. We are always listening and always available. Um, you can reach out to us via our website or via any of our socials. So we look forward to hearing for you, from you. Um, all of these beautiful pieces will also be available for sale. For that, you will need to visit the SCOM website. Uh, you will find links for the same uh, on the G5A site as well and across social media. Uh, so please definitely uh, check that out and give everyone that you see here a follow. Um, and last but not least, a little bit of a reminder that if you did enjoy this session, uh, to please consider uh, donating to our Arts are resilient to the fund. Um, the fund will support sessions such as this uh, for our next season and we truly depend on uh, people such as you to be a part of that and be a part of such conversation. Uh, so thank you uh, and good night. And uh, we hope to see you soon, very much uh, in our space. And yes, thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you for participating. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you.